Hey guys, this is Dow Phoenix, and I figure I'd do a little bit of an impression video on the new Xbox 360 dashboard. Um, as you can see, I'm at the very beginning on the Bing screen here, where you can search for anything you want. Uh, that's actually the first thing we're going to go ahead and demonstrate there. Uh, so, of course, you got the keypad up on the top that you can use, which is a really bad way of doing the keypad. I think that Netflix from before used that. But... Fortunately, on my 360 controller, I got the, uh, you know, the text pad on there. So I'm just going to do it that way real quick. I'm just going to type in a search term real quick. Okay, so I just figure I type in gears and uh, search for that and see what comes up. And you'll get this nice little animation that, uh, you know, shows you all the various things here, of course. Um, you know, most of it's obviously Gears of War, Gears of War 2, Gears of War 3, as you see there. You can press on one of those options, and uh, they give you the option to purchase it if they have it on Games on Demand, and, you know, it gives you other options. Uh, tells you about the downloadable content and everything like that, pictures for the game. You know, pretty much the general thing. That really hasn't changed a lot. The interface has changed a little bit, but uh, not much different. Uh, it's just with the whole Bing search, they made it easier to, I guess, find content if, uh, if you have some trouble finding it in the marketplace. Um, here's uh, 100 results, apparently. It keeps going on. There's, like, soundtracks and all kinds of stuff here. So, anyways, uh, let's move on to the next thing here. So, this is our new homes panel. Um, overall, at first when I, when I first saw this, I really hated the interface. Because it seemed like it, it was just nothing but a ploy to make it as crappy as possible, unless you're a Connect user, to make it easy to use as a Connect player. But I've gotten used to it. I, I, I don't mind it too much now. I still prefer the previous interface a little bit better, though. Um, but anyways, you got this middle panel, which if you flick with the right stick, uh, you can, you know, manually choose those options. Um, you have to uh, select it whenever. You know, like if I do the new face of Xbox, it'll show this video, which, screw it, <laughs> I'm not going to make everybody watch it here. Uh, of course, there's open tray, you know, up there is where the game is loaded. Obviously, I mean, that's cool and all, but I think the game should be, like, front and center. You know, I mean, this is the, when you first open up the Xbox, it should be right here. And then you start playing the game if you want. Um, there's a cloud save section, which, you know, this is a video on how to use it. Uh, the cloud save sections, I mean, that that, that feature is kind of cool. I haven't really utilized it, so, uh, but um, it's cool that they have that. Uh, of course, they have the advertisements. It's stupid that they have the advertisements. Consider we pay uh, now $60 a year uh, for the service. Uh, there's no reason there to be advertisements, Microsoft. Um, advertisements are for a service when you um, don't pay for it. You know, I mean, if you want to make Xbox Live free and make us watch like an ad, Whatever, I'm totally cool with that, but uh, please get rid of those advertisements. I mean, at least I guess a one thing, they don't auto-play anymore, and they are smaller, so that's good, that's an improvement, but they still shouldn't be there at all. Uh, I like the new Quick Play section, uh, because it gives a nice little cover art, you know, that shows you all the games you've played or whatever recently downloaded. Um, obviously, I don't play a lot of games, as you can tell, uh, for some reason, Skyrim's not even on here. I've been recently playing Skyrim. It's not even on this list. I guess it only shows games that are downloaded on the console. Um, okay, or in the disk drive. So if you hit up, you can change the options here. So i got social. Um, I'm not too much of a fan of how they did this layout because you can't scroll over and see more than, like, three friends. It just automatically goes to video. It should allow you to keep scrolling. Now, you can... Uh, go up here to this friends panel and and do it that way but you can't choose like the friends that you see up in the front you have no option on choosing them so uh, anyways uh one new feature is a beacons and activities section uh which allows you to uh, select like let's say for instance um i want to play works must die and i want to tell my facebook friends hey uh, next time you get an Orcs Must Die, let's play together. So I can go ahead and select that. I don't have any friends who've uh, played the game. Well, that's great. So maybe I can tell them to play. I can set a beacon. And select Orcs Must Die. 
and then I can, you know, share it with my Facebook. It says the social networks, but the feature doesn't work with Twitter. It's only Facebook. Um, there's no Google Plus integration or anything like that. So that's kind of stupid. They should just say share to Facebook <laughs> because that's the only option. Uh, and then, of course, I can edit the comment that I'll show on there, too. Maximum 40 characters. Okay. So I can set the beacon. Uh, I'm not going to because, like I said, nobody has this game, so it's not even worth bothering. Uh, I've checked my friends list just to make sure. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's kind of a cool feature. Like, I guess maybe more so if I wanted to do, like, Modern Warfare 3. Because everybody else is playing that, apparently. I don't have the game. I just rented it. It was good, but I'm not going to buy it because the aforementioned Activision ban in the previous video. Uh, so there's that section. Um, where is everything? Oh, I have to exit out. Okay. So, um... Okay, and there's the social apps. That's just, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Video Connect. Of course, gotta advertise a Connect nonsense. Okay. So, you got video. Uh, we've got a couple of new things here. Uh, as you see, there's my video apps. Uh, of course, you know, the various... You know, even though it doesn't say advertisements, they pretty much are. It's just Microsoft advertisers for free, I guess. Whereas these ones, they have to pay for that little spot. Um, I guess these are like featured content. So you got the video marketplace of Zoom. Um, a lot easier to get to that, obviously, if you ever use that. Uh, here's the My Video apps, which uh, the only new one we have is Epics. Now, uh, Epics seem like it would be cool. Uh, actually, there is uh, more, I guess... Uh, these are the ones I have installed, but there's Hulu Plus and ESPN and stuff like that on there also. Um, but anyways, I installed the Epix one. It's like, sweet, you know, another video option um, to watch an Xbox Live, you know, like Netflix or Hulu. And um, guess what? Uh, there's no... Uh, you have to pay for it. Um, I, I noticed that, you know, we pay the $60 a year to Microsoft, but I'm, I'm really not sure what that's actually for. Because we don't actually get anything for the $60. Um, all the content that we get on Xbox Live is free elsewhere. Like, uh, for instance, if I want to watch Netflix on my Xbox, I have to have Xbox Live Gold. Um, and that's stupid because I am not running through Microsoft's server at all when I'm on Netflix. I'm running through Netflix's server. Uh, so, the, you know, Xbox Live Silver members should have that. Uh, same with uh, Hulu Plus. I don't use Hulu Plus, but if I did, there's no reason for me to pay for it. Xbox, it has nothing to do with Xbox. So why do only gold members have that? Uh, Facebook and Twitter, same thing. Doesn't go through Xbox's servers at all. Goes through Facebook, goes through Twitter. Uh, you see the point here? Uh, ESPN is just uh, ESPN3.com. Type that in your web browser, you get to watch all the same content you get to watch on Xbox without having to pay for Xbox Live Gold. So the only justification for Xbox Live Gold is to play online, which you could do for free on PlayStation 3. I mean, I guess I can understand, you know, that if it would be a good online experience, and it is a good online experience, but it's not actually better than PS3. It's as good. I mean, yes, it was better at first, but, um, obviously with this Epic thing, that's another thing I have to subscribe to. Uh, you can get it for free if you have it through, like, your Comcast or Charter or Verizon or whatever internet, you know. Or not internet, but, uh, it's TV subscription. I don't actually subscribe to anything but basic cable, so that's not going to do any good for me. Um, so anyways, we're going to get out of that now. And uh, one thing I noticed is the new dashboard has, like, longer loading times. Everything seems to be slower. Like, why did that take so long to just go back? Um, okay, so there's the game section. Uh, so you can see everything's pretty much the same here. Like, you know, for instance, if I go to that, they change that layout a little bit. Um, not really much. You know, got the... Yeah, not a whole lot of specials there. I uh, got the music section. Um, you know, everything's pretty much the same. Uh, you know, you got the music apps, which there's no new music apps whatsoever. I uh, got the music player, is the other one right there. You know, you can do like Zoom and Last FM also, but I don't really care for those. Uh, here's the app section where you can access any downloaded apps. Yeah, see, like I said, there's the advertisement right there. 
you know, they should at least expand the advertisement if you choose to watch it because that video is really small. You know, if you're on a, if you're sitting far away from the TV, you know, it's gonna be hard to see the video. You'll be able to hear it sound just fine, but. Um, so yeah, if I go to the apps marketplace, you know, this is really undercooked because there's nothing on here virtually. I could download the two-day show, a big whoop. I don't care. <laughs> um, and then if you go to see all, it, that's literally it. There's, you know, the Netflix player or not the Netflix, but the YouTube player is not launched yet for some dumb reason. Uh, music, just last FM and Zoom. Social, like I've already said, to show you, and here's the coming soon. This is all the various coming soon things. I guarantee you that most of this will require a subscription. YouTube won't. Uh, Crackle might not. Uh, I'm not really sure what Daily Motion is. I R Radio, I don't think that'll require one because that's free also. But I guarantee you these uh, bottom three will all require some kind of subscription in addition to your Xbox Live Gold. So you don't really get any benefits. All The, the top row are content that you can get free on your web browser right now or get a free for your PS3. Um, and so you don't really get anything with it, you know. There's no actual benefit that, you know, like content that you get for being a gold subscriber that you either get for free that you otherwise have to pay for or, you know, something of that nature. I know it's kind of a stupid complaint, but really if you think about it, it's not. Uh, of course, you know, we got other apps like the Verizon Fios. I'm sure that's only for Verizon. The Voodoo section, that might be useful to see because, I mean, that's one advantage the PS3 has had over the Xbox is the ability to rent movies out there. Uh, it's only a minor advantage because the only reason it's an advantage at all because sometimes when you buy a new movie, it'll give you, like, a free Voodoo thing to stream some other movie, which, you know, that's the only reason to have it, basically. MLB TV, guess what? You're going to have to pay a subscription for that. Um, HBO Go, you got to have HBO. Xfinity, you know, same like as the Verizon, you only you have to be a subscriber to that. So, yeah, the uh, Apps Marketplace doesn't really give us anything good. Uh, YouTube will be the only thing that's really important. iHeartRadio might be okay, but it's pretty much the same as Last of the Fam. There's no difference uh, between it. Maybe they should have included Spotify or something like that, perhaps. Um... And, uh, another complaint, by the way, on that app, um, uh, you know, I subscribe to the Zune, uh, the Zune Music Pass... <laughs> And I really like it a lot, but you cannot uh, listen to the music through their wall playing an Xbox game. And there's no reason for that. Um, I even tried downloading it to my PC, and it just does not give me an option to do that. Uh, the settings is improved, you know, as far as how they set that up. But everything else is, you know, it's all pretty much the same. It's just a nice, prettier layout. Finally, they, you know, changed the... Uh, menu here, of course, where you can, you know, get a couple of things here. Uh, I'm not sure if this is actually a new feature with this update, but you can post achievements on Facebook now. Um, for example, let's say I want to go to Skyrim, and I want to tell people that I joined the Thieves Guild, you know, so I can share that. And, uh, you know, bam, you know, I can add a message or whatever, which that's pretty cool. But there's one problem with that. Uh, um, at, on the PS3, you can enable it to show trophies automatically. Like, it'll automatically post it for you. So anytime you're playing a game, bam, trophy. You know, post it up on Facebook for you automatically. On the 360, you have to do everything manually. There's no option to actually put that up there. Of course, you know, I'm only talking about that used to be a feature on the PS3. I, I haven't seen it in a while. Um, so they might have removed that feature possibly, but uh, yeah, I mean, if they did, that means the only company that does do it automatically is on live, uh, which is another one that's been having a problem. I haven't bothered messing with messaging about it, but uh, I noticed that my uh, on live achievements haven't been posted on Facebook lately. Like, the only ones that have were uh, Deus Ex Human Revolution. So I don't know if maybe the games aren't working on them all or what, but uh, anyways, that's all I gotta say about the uh, new Xbox Live dashboard. Overall, it's not bad. Um, I kind of prefer the original layout. I'm sure I'll like this one more whenever they start adding the more in more content. Um, but I really wish that Microsoft gives us some kind of value-added incentive, you know, that makes us... You know, like, for instance, the Call of Duty Elite. I mean, yes, you got to pay 
50 bucks a year for that, and that's kind of dumb. But I have to give it to Activision. They actually gave you a value in an incentive, a value incentive to uh, purchase that because you get all the downloaded content for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Uh, you get access to all the uh, you know exclusive videos and maps and whatnot and so on. You know, and of course you pay ten dollars less than you would just to purchase the DLC separately. So if you're a big COD fan, why wouldn't you buy that? You know, it actually is a value incentive. Uh, to actually purchase that. Whereas Xbox Live, there really is no value incentive. It's just a, a fake expectation that you have to pay to play your games online. So with that, guys, down Phoenix out.